Da Kloso e Yenis Mon. Hello and welcome. Good afternoon. I am in Menai Bridge. Small car park. Waitrose is just basically just around the corner, but what I'm going to do is hopefully a nice walk for a couple of hours um, around the area of Menai Bridge and the Britannia Bridge down the coastal path. So I hope you enjoy this. All new for me. So let's go. Just look at the power of that tide there. So I'm not repeating myself. Uh, that was 20 minutes down the A5, about one and a half K. Just before the bridge, I'm gonna take this little path here. Late September, but lovely tranquility. Ah, didn't expect it to be signposted, but I am looking for one of these. Now I'm lucky enough to have seen the Arnside Boar at Morecambe Bay and the power of that, but good grief. Uh, I'm sure these are called the Skellies but you can just see the difficulty that they must have had when they were trying to cross this. On the Anglesey Coastal Path here proper, um, it's pretty funky, but it is a wild nature path. Welcome to the Britannia Bridge. Just a quick one, if you just notice, there's some canoeists just going through the middle of the shot there. They are not having to paddle. That is how quick the current is. Now, it was opened in 1850, designed by Robert Stevenson, a very famous engineer. But at the time, there was a huge requirement for uh, uh, diplomatic and uh, goods traffic to go between London and Ireland. So this is why they went to build the railway here. It was very innovative because it used a uh, box girder design using a uh, wrought iron. In a nutshell, it was two steel tubes that carried each of the railway lines over to Holyhead. Now, just to point out again, just look at this tide. It is incredible. And basically they had to float each part out uh, against all these tides to get it built. It took them four years. Also, unfortunately, in 1970, the original uh, box girder bit burnt down and the replacement uh, took about 10 years to do. So now you've got the road bridge on top. But what a place. Just come up the path there and to see something that I never knew about until not long ago. There are two sandstone lions. Obviously, they're doing some work on the bridge. There's the other one just middle of the shot, but you, you can Google them. In fact, I'll just stick a picture up of one of them. So the coastal path uses the A5 for a little bit. So what I'm going to do is get back to you in about half an hour when we get onto the coastal path properly. One hour and 30, just about 4.7K. We're just gonna follow the sign down here and join the coastal path properly. Hmm. Magic, isn't it? Then you just suddenly pop out. I always try and do things that are good for the soul, but this is an island of the soul. Innis Ticilio. Let's go and have a look. So, Sant Ticilio, as I think you say it in Welsh, but he was um, a 7th century son of a Powys nobleman and basically he didn't want to be involved in warfare. He felt he wanted to be a man of the, uh, of the cloth. So basically he ended up here at one point for seven years, basically hiding from his family because he did not want to partake in military service. But it looks like particularly around in this area, he very much was uh, a well-renowned missionary who ended his time over in Brittany but it's absolutely serene, this place. The current church is from the 15th century, but 
They reckon it was built on the site of a hermitage established by St. Tazilio. But I never knew about this place, I really didn't. It's absolutely beautiful. This is one of the most moving war memorials I've ever seen. I'm really glad I went there. So, just a right turn now, two hours, five and a half K. It's been brilliant. One last thing to get up close and personal with, the Menai Bridge. Designed by Thomas Telford, it was completed in 1826. Again, it was a pivotal part of the communications between London and Ireland. It is, I think, 500 and about 27 feet long, the main platform, and it has 16 huge chains holding it up. What gets you though, look at the tide below, how quickly even now it's moving, a couple of hours after high tide. How on earth they built it, you just never know. Actually, both the uh, Britannia and the Manai bridges had to be 100 feet high to allow for tall ships to go under. That's just what makes them so massive. Two hours and 20, just over 6K. We've got to go and get the views, haven't we? Look at these, you could catch a dinosaur with them. This is some engineering. Wow. Probably all cast by hand as well, most of it. Unbelievable. Just remembered uh, I get vertigo as well, by the way. <laughs> I might have just muttered something when I walked around the corner and saw this. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm in the middle. I'm in the middle. I do admit I've not found this easy. YouTube normally like me because I, you know, I don't swear and <laughs> things on my, check that out, on my, uh, videos but yeah that wasn't easy but I've got to go back again so we'll do the other side. Here we go. Let's get across. That's a beauty, absolutely. I think it's this gap here that I've got a problem with, that one. It is an engineering work of art. Honestly, for me, that's one of the more extreme things I've done for quite a while. I found that difficult. Had to nip in the waitress with some uh, Porth Maddock ale. <laughs> and I'm back, so that was three hours, seven and a half kilometres, and just stunning. So many different places and views, I've really enjoyed it. So thank you very much for coming on a walk with me around Menai Bridge. I really hope you've enjoyed it.